All right, let's get to the latest in Ukraine, uh, where the uh, officials there say Russia has launched its anticipated offensive in the eastern Donbass region. The Ukrainian military says the new phase began when Russian forces tried to break through its defenses along the entire front line from Kharkiv in the north to Donetsk in the south. But some military officials, both in Ukraine and in the west, say the ground is still being set. A Ukrainian military official tells the New York Times that the offensive will, quote, activate in the coming days, end quote. Last week, the U.S. said Russia wasn't ready to launch the new offensive because of ongoing logistical problems. Here's what the Pentagon is saying now. These appear to be chronic difficulties that the Russian military has had in terms of logistics and sustainment, command and control, unit cohesion, operational maneuver, integration of air to ground, all problems that they still suffer from. Um, so it remains to be seen whether they have, quote, fixed these problems and are now ready to execute in a more efficient way in the Donbass. Um, our assessment is that they are still struggling with a lot of these problems. Our also, also our assessment is that part of the reason we're talking about shaping operations in the Donbass is because the Russians are trying to learn from their mistakes. So uh, in the last few days, we have seen them move in, as I said, command and control enablers, aviation support, largely helicopters, moving in artillery units ahead of what would be massive ground movements by troops or larger ground movements by troops. So it appears as if they are trying to learn from those mistakes. But again, it remains to be seen whether they've actually fixed their problems. In a video discussing the new Russian offensive, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said, quote, we will defend ourselves, we will fight, we will not give away anything Ukrainian. And Admiral, nobody doubts that after what we've seen over yeah. the last couple of months in Ukraine. But the question remains of what this offensive is going to look like. It's the front page of all the newspapers that this long anticipated invasion in the East has begun. A big aid package signed last week, announced by President Biden, but still President Zelensky says it's not enough. Those 40,000 rounds of artillery are nice. It'll last us about a week. We need more. We need more. So what do you expect to see now as Russia moves in from the east? Um, let's do it on both sides. So on the Russian side of this, we're going to see combined arms operations, which means simply putting together all those pieces that Admiral Kirby just talked about, um, integrating them. That's hard. That's hard for U.S. militaries to do. We've got a lot of experience doing this in Iraq and Afghanistan. Doing that kind of big theater-wide operation is very hard. Number two, logistics. We mm -hmm. talk about it endlessly, mm -hmm. but professionals are focused on logistics. The amateurs are worried about the strategy. Logistics eats strategy for lunch. Mm -hmm. So the idea that Russia is going to simply immediately solve these kind of deep-rooted problems. And third and finally, you can't surge leadership onto a battlefield. And that's what we've seen again and again is a lack of direct leadership. So on the Russian side of this, yeah, we're going to see a lot of peace parts moving on the battlefield. Don't look for some sweeping, cohesive battle plan. On the Ukrainian side, look for endless resistance, Willie. They are here to stay. And, and let's close on a snapshot of Mariupol, uh, mm. a doomed city, but where you see defenders like at the Alamo um, standing and delivering for their country, magnify ah. that through the Ukrainian At that fighting steel forces. factory we're looking at right now, that's and their Alamo. It is their Alamo, and we ought, to, we ought to honor it. So, Admiral, we've heard for a while now that this battle in the Donbass is going to look different than what we have seen to this point in the war, which a lot of it has been urban warfare, sort of guerrilla fighting, but this is going to be more set-piece combat. Explain to viewers exactly what that means. Are these going to be tanks lined up? What sort of numbers are we talk about? What sort of artillery is going to be used? Yeah, think about uh, the revenge of geography. In other words, you can change a lot of things on the battlefield. You can't change the terrain. And thus, as you point out correctly, Jonathan, out of the cities onto the plains of Ukraine, it's a vast, think Kansas. And um, as a result of that, that armor can move, uh, both the tanks, the armored personnel carriers. And yes, what the Russians envision is a sweeping set piece kind of battle like we haven't seen since the Second World War. We'll see, A, if they can deliver that, and B, Ukrainians have plenty of firepower that yeah. we've given them to put uh, a real sense of uh, 
defense in front of the Russians. So it, it's going to be quite striking to watch. And before the show, we were talking about my brother Ian, who spent time in Ukraine helping establish defense policy back in like the early 90s. Yeah. But he also did some army experience. And again, the difference between these two militaries, Ukraine versus Russia, logistics. They're completely disorganized in Russia in a way that's surprising people. Did, did you ever, Admiral, when you were serving, did you ever sense it, it, did you get any hint of this uh, among your Russian counterparts? That that they were just let's just face it, they're they're like a mess, double A at best. Yeah. They're, well, let put it this way: they're the second best army in Ukraine right now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're, they're bad. They may be bigger, but yeah. It, during the, about ten years ago, when I was Supreme Allied Commander of NATO, I spent a fair amount of time with my counterpart, General Nikolai Makarov, and he would talk to me endlessly about how the Russians were going to professionalize, how they were going to get out of the conscript business, how they were going to improve mm -hmm. their logistics, they were going to improve their technology. And we watched that and saw some of that happening. But let me tell you, Joe, until the bullets fly, you don't know what kind of military you actually have. Interesting. And by the way, President Xi, as he looks at the world, right. he's got to be asking himself, I wonder if what my generals and admirals are telling me is about as accurate as what Putin so was obviously told by right. his. So